Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another Silhouette Sunday video. In today's video, I'm going to be making a home decor project for a friend. She asked me to make her a key holder, but she had a very specific design that she wanted on the front of the wood plaque. And this design is basically an initial with the name subtracted, and it looked like the item she sent me the picture of was actually a pillow. So this is not my original design. I'm really just copying something to make something for a friend. So um, I figured I would show you the process in case you wanted to make something similar for yourself. And I would link to that item down below if I knew what it was that she showed me, but I don't. Um, like I said, I think it was a pillow that she took a picture of at somebody's house. Uh, but anyways, I'm going to go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is actually draw a box that's just going to act as a frame of reference. So the plaque I'm working with is approximately 10 and a half inches wide by eight inches high. So I'm gonna go ahead and scale a box to that size just so that I know how big my um, image should be. So the plaque I'm working with is approximately 10 and a half by eight inches. So I gave myself a box so that I know when my letter is too big. So for the main initial, I'm going to use a font called Teletype and I'm going to make a W because their last name is Whirly. So I'm going to go ahead and change this. And this obviously is way too small for my project. So I'm going to go ahead and make this much, much, much bigger. And this particular W, although I like the typewriter font, is very skinny. So what I'm going to do is offset this particular W just to make it a little bit thicker. So once I have it close to the size I want it to be, I'm going to go ahead and click offset. And it's going to preset to 0.125, but I'm actually going to go ahead and... Actually, you know what? I'm going to leave it at 0.125, but I am going to change it to corner because that is my preferred offset. And then I'm going to click apply. So now I don't need this guy in the middle anymore. So I'm going to click delete and that's going to disappear. And this is the W that's going to be the main image on my project. Next, I need to type their last name. So it's going to look really busy on the screen here for a second. But their last name is Worley. And the font that that particular item was in was Magnolia Sky. And I know this just because I know that Magnolia Sky font very well. I've used it for a lot of projects over the years. So I'm going to go ahead and select it and make this much bigger so that it's in scale with the rest of the project, the W. Once I have these two scaled roughly to the size I want them to be, I'm going to go ahead and right click on this name and just click weld because I want it to be all one piece. And I'm also going to create an offset that I'm going to use to subtract a part of this W away. So with the Whirly last name actually selected, I'm going to go ahead and go back to my offset window and I'm actually going to make this just a hair bigger. So I'm going to change this to 0.16. So it's not much bigger, but it is a little bit bigger. And select corner, and then I'm going to click apply. And my name is still here. And I'm going to drag this over to the side because I, I need that later, but not right now. So this is approximately where I want the final, what I want the final product to look like. So I'm going to go ahead and select this last name and I'm going to hold down shift on my keyboard and select the W and then I'm going to go to the modify window and the modify window gives you a bunch of tools. And if you hold your mouse on top, it'll actually tell you what each of the tools does. Now, some of the tools give a shape that you probably don't expect. My advice is just to always play with these tools and see what you get. So today I'm going to be using the subtract option. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. Once you click subtract, I know what the item you're left with looks really crazy, but it'll look a little more logical if I go ahead and I fill these in with colors. And this way I'm also able to double check that this is going to look how I expect it to look when I cut it out. 
So I'm going to go ahead and click on the fill color option and fill all these pieces in with black just so I can see what I'm getting. And this is roughly what the final product is going to look like. So when it's layered together, it looks a little less crazy. But I do see some spots where things didn't weld exactly the way I thought they would weld, which is pretty normal with, or excuse me, subtract the way I thought they would subtract, which is pretty normal in my experience. So there's this one little piece right here that I'm going to go ahead and remove. So I'm going to select it and click delete. And you could leave it if you want, but it looks distracting to me. So I'm going to go ahead and send this to my silhouette just like this to cut out so that I can transfer it to my final product. So I will see you guys in just a minute. I've already weeded my design and the directions for weeding comes with most prepackaged vinyl, but basically all weeding is is removing the parts of the design that you don't want and leaving the parts you do want on the backer sheet. So I've taped the carrier sheet down to my work surface so that I can apply some transfer tape. And I decided to tape it down just because it was rolling up so much so that I couldn't get the transfer tape down without it bouncing up. But anyways, I removed the design and applied it to a pre-painted wood plaque. And this was just painted with regular acrylic paint and left outside to dry for a day or so. Once the design is where I want it, I'm going to rub over it quite a bit to help that design transfer off of the backer sheet. And once I'm sure that it has transferred, I'm going to peel from the bottom corner to remove the transfer paper. This last step is optional, but I'm using some matte Mod Podge on top of the vinyl design just to seal it to the board so it doesn't come up over time but you could leave it as is. So that was it for this project. Here's a quick look at the final product. And as always guys, thanks for watching.